Antarctica, the most isolated continent on planet Earth. Its dangerously cold climate makes it unsuitable for human life. Only the most daring people would even think of visiting this place. But if you have enough courage, it is all worth it to experience breathtaking environments, fascinating wildlife, and the ability to kill someone and get away with it. Wait, what? Crime is not common at all in this snowy land, because not many people go there in the first place. But when it does, oh ho, 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 it's a guy attacking someone over chess. These are the most notable cases of illegal acts performed in Antarctica. Where else to start but the guy attacking someone over chess? The year is 1959. Two Soviet researchers play a game of chess. The unhinged one of the two ends up losing. This angers him to the point of grabbing an ice axe and attacking the other researcher. It's unknown whether or not this attack was deadly, but it led to the Soviet Union taking action by banning chess games in Antarctica. It doesn't take a capitalist nation to know that chess was not the driving force for this. When you're far from home in a big, cold, and empty place with practically nothing to do and no way of contacting the people you love, you're bound to become pretty unstable. That's what happens in pretty much every scenario I'll be discussing. In less severe cases, this has caused alcohol abuse, mild fights, and indecent exposure. God forbid a penguin sees a human ball sack. Anyway, later that same year, the Antarctic Treaty was signed, which, among other things, claimed that anyone accused of a crime in Antarctica would be punished under their home country's laws. As funny as it sounds, no, the chess game was not responsible for this. Like all the world's problems, it was caused by the United States military. They wanted to train in severely cold conditions. Since then, 56 countries have agreed to this treaty. You know it's serious when even Kim Jong-un is on. On board. So no, you can't get away with murder. Fortunately or unfortunately, depending on who you are, didn't stop some Argentinian researcher from trying in what might just be the most embarrassing failure I have ever seen. April 12th, 1984. The leader of an Argentina station is ordered to stay for the winter. It's always winter there though, is it not? Regardless, the leader is not having it, so he decides to retaliate by lighting the station on fire, burning it down crew is in panic mode. Out of fear for their safety, they are all picked up and taken to a different research station. My god, this plan just seems so foolproof. No research station means no work can be done. No snow means no winter. Even if the fire is put out prematurely, the heat from it would cancel out the cold and Antarctica would be a much safer place. That's totally how it works, right? I feel so bad for the guy who did this. It backfired. <laughs> Hard. Doesn't make what he did morally okay, but come on, you just gotta feel a little bad for him. This next one's a huge milestone. It's the first from America. Go USA! October 9th, 1996. Inside the kitchen of McMurdo Station, a fight takes place between two workers. One of the chefs in the kitchen tries to de-escalate the situation, but it only makes things worse. Eventually, the fight culminates with one of them attacking the other two with a hammer. They were left in stitches. The attacker was flown out to Hawaii, where he was charged with four counts of assault. The victims, meanwhile, were fortunate enough to make a full recovery. MC Hammer here got to leave and take a vacation at Hawaii. It just never ends for the poor fire guy. On the bright side, both of these cases were solved, which can't be said for this next one. I'm gonna pause the jokes here, because it's quite dark. May 11th, 2000. Astrophysicist Rodney Mark suddenly feels sick with a fever, stomach ache, and nausea. A day later, he tragically died. The body had to be kept in a freezer for six months before it could be taken for an examination. The crew assumed that Rodney died of natural causes. But once the time came for the autopsy, it was discovered that someone had injected methanol into him. There were 49 other people present on the base, so narrowing it down was tough. On top of that, the territory where it occurred was in legal limbo on which country owned it, so there was no easy way to determine which country should punish the culprit. To this day, nobody knows who poisoned Rodney Marks. With how isolated Antarctica is, the likelihood of this ever being solved is low. Well, that took quite a turn.
Here's a more lighthearted and bizarre case. October 9th, 2018. We're back to where it all began in a Russian research station. Sergei Savitsky, an electrical engineer, and Oleg Beloguzov, a welder, have been working together for six months. They were not on the best of terms with each other. At this time, Savitsky was checking out some books in the station's library. Beloguzov, noticing he hasn't finished them, decides to mess with him and spoil the endings of the books. Savitsky Savitsky, angered, drunk, and in the midst of an emotional breakdown, grabs a knife and stabs him. Belaguzov is taken to a Chilean hospital while Savitsky surrenders to the station's manager. He was flown back to Russia where he'd be placed on house arrest until December of that year. By the time the trial began, Belaguzov had made a full recovery. Yeah, this technically means Antarctica has the lowest murder rate in the world. During the trial, Savitsky showed remorse for what he had done, and Belaguzov forgave him, suggesting that the case be dropped. The judge saw that Savitsky had no history history of past crimes, so he agreed. No one was permanently harmed, no one was sent to jail, everyone was happy. 